Hey folks, today we're going to be doing a first impressions of a game coming from CGE called That's a Question. This is coming out in uh, next week at, at Gen Con, so, or in two weeks at Gen Con. And so this is a party game from Vladis Vato. I think this is his third party game. His last party game, Codename, took the world by storm. I don't think That's a Question is going to do that, but this is that question you ask someone, do you like tigers better or bears? Something like that, except now you're guessing what other people are going to do. Here's how it plays. Remember, of course, that this game is a prototype. It's a very early, I mean, most of this is gonna look very much like this. Uh, this is a first impressions video. Each player is gonna have a squirrel. The point of this game is to have the most points when the game runs out. And you just do that by moving along this track here. Uh, there's gonna be different cards in the game and players are going to start with a handful of these cards and then there's going to be another deck of cards and when that deck runs out that's when the game is over and whoever has most points wins. Each player is going to start with an acorn except for the player who goes first. Now on your turn what you're going to do is you're going to take an acorn from somebody else who has one. That is the person you're going to be asking a question to. You are then going to choose two of the five cards in your hand and put them down to make a question for that person. So uh, the questions are one of three types. Let's zoom up here and look at these. The first one is, what would you miss more if it ceases to exist? Would you miss wine more or would you miss playgrounds more? All right, here's your chance. Um, the person who, everyone has an A and a B card. Everyone's gonna put one of these down. So pretend that you put one down now. Which one would Tom Vassell miss more? And the answer, of course, is playgrounds. I would miss playgrounds more. Or maybe the question is, what do you consider generally worse? Do you consider it when, if someone keeps money they saw fall out of someone else's pocket? Or if someone steals a handful of coins from a blind panhandler? Oh, that's awful. Both of those are terrible. But stealing from someone who's blind is worse. So that's the one that I would pick there. And then the third category is, what would you rather choose? Would you rather choose to be a world famous singer or to find a way to ensure enough drinking water worldwide? Ooh, uh, uh, I'll pick the ensure enough way to have drinking world worldwide because fame is not important. It's more important to make sure other people uh, are having a, 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 uh, the water they need. Or how about to be the best cook in the world or to invent faster than light travel? Oh, oh that's a hard choice. I'd love to be a great cook, but honestly, inventing faster than light travel is better. Or what would you miss more if it ceases to exist? The moon and the stars on the night sky? Or orchestral music? Oh, that choice there. I'm gonna have to go with orchestral music. Or would I miss forests more if they cease to exist? Or bathing suits? Pfft, that's an easy one. Who cares about bathing suits? Forests, I would miss them. Or is someone worse? if they talk loudly on their cell phone in public, or if they destroy posters of other political parties, or if they keep telling jokes although they're terrible at it, or they go out with friends and can't stop playing on their phone. That's the worst. Anyhow, so after everyone guesses, all right, everybody who matches the correct answer of the person who's been asked a question is going to get a point. The person who's asked a question always gets a point. The person who asked the question gets one point for each person, other than themselves, who guessed incorrectly. So you want to give a question that people aren't sure on. Also, when you give an answer to a question, you can play a kicker with it. So this it will just triple your points if you're correct. And this one you can play when you're answering a question, and it will also give you points for each other person who got it wrong. That's pretty much the whole game. Okay, so there's a couple things. I like the game and it's fun. There's gonna be, everyone who's played it has said to me, but what about replayability? Is that gonna be a problem? And my answer to that is maybe, I don't know. There is a lot of cards in the game. There's a lot of different combinations and things. So I don't think it's that big of a deal, but it does come down to, are they going to say A or B? If you know the person, you have an advantage because you know what your spouse or your loved ones or your kids are going to pick. You may not know what Mr. Joe Bag of Donuts is going to pick because you've never played a game with Mr. Bag of Donuts before. Um, I do like the questions, the different categories they have. I like the different um, uh, answers. They're funny. They're interesting. 
And because someone is picking them for you, they're probably going to pick two that they think you have a hard time with. And that's what's crucial about this game. Picking between two choices, lots of games do that. Um, guessing what someone else is going to pick, lots of games do that. Trying to pick something and then getting points for the, all the wrong answers, that's kind of the twist on this game. So this is a decent party game. I'd probably rank it a 7 out of 10 or something like that because it's fun. The questions are funny. The discussions they bring, I like that. I'm just not sure that it's going to go down in the all-time great like code names did. The rule book is funny and it's about squirrels and there's the whole thing with acorns, which is also an interesting thing because you can't get asked a question unless you have an acorn. You can't keep asking the same person questions all the time because they'll lose their acorns. And if you keep, no one ever asks you a question, you'll have enough acorns in front of you eventually people will have to ask you questions. That's a good way of doing it. At first, I thought it was kind of a wonky thing, give me the acorn, but it worked well in this game. So uh, the components, I can't really speak to them. These look decent, but again, the full version's coming out in a few weeks, but I did like it. Uh, it's a great game, and I can have fun just turning over two cards, saying which one would I be more sad if it disappeared off the world? Stuff like that's always fun, and if you like that, you're going to like That's a Question. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.